Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're going to be going over my top 5 picks for the current position 4 role. There's been obviously a lot of nerfs and buffs as of late so I wanted to give an updated list on what I think are the best soft supports in Dota right now. And guys, I've been streaming almost every other day over on Twitch, so if you guys want to check me out playing some pubs, if you want some free coaching, or even play in-houses with me, we even have a lot of fun, click the link down below. It's, it's, yeah, it's great fun, so I hope to see you guys there. By the way, guys, if you want to become absolutely broken, well, what you need to do is sign up to the Game Leap website down below right now. The reason why you should do that is because every single day we post a new video there. Content that you simply just will never get on YouTube, we post every single day to the website. It's really top tier stuff. I'm very proud of what I make over there. We also have other creators, many of my great friends who are top tier Dota players creating guides about different heroes, different roles, different items, skill builds, talent builds, everything you need to know to get to the next rank. So if you feel a little bit lost, you're a little bit stuck, click the link down below. I'll see you guys there. And now let's get into the video. Coming in at number five is a hero I'm on the fence about. It's a hero that is actually below a 50% win rate on Dota buff, but to be fair, is doing very well on Dota 2 Pro Tracker, and that is Bounty Hunter. Now, there's a couple things I want to talk about with Bounty Hunter that I think will make this hero a really good hero to learn right now, and even do well with right now if you understand it. Number one, I think this hero is going to get buffed again whenever the next patch is. That could be in a month, that could be in two months, that could be in, I don't know, a year. But the thing is, I think this hero has been getting buffed a lot. However, it's not seeing a lot of play because it's simply outshined by most of the team fighting heroes or heroes with better laning stages. It kind of falls into this weird place of like, it's not the best vision hero. It's not. Uh, if you want a better vision hero as a four, I actually generally just recommend Weaver right now. That hero is significantly better at providing vision and frontlining compared to Bounty Hunter, considering it's actually mobile and has a way to get out when it gets caught. And so does Bounty Hunter when he has a ton of items, but that's kind of the problem. He has to build up a lot of items with often what I would consider pretty mediocre early game spells. So how should you play Bounty Hunter? Number one, drag waves. Okay, the lane is going to be bad. Drag the waves. Number two, snipe couriers. Okay, and number three, pull the waves for your teammates. If you can stick to these three things, you'll do a lot better. All right, there's one more. I want to add one more. Buy BKB. My personal favorite build on position for Bounty Hunter is as follows. Phase boots into drums into BKB. You just want to be able to run around, provide vision, and tank for your team. And that is what these items will do. Also, the casual one is obviously going to be really nice. Also, I'd like to say that I think this is one of those heroes where when you get comfortable on it and you get really good at scouting things out and, and providing vision, it actually teaches you a very valuable lesson when it comes to learning Dota, which is the understanding of you know, just the vision game. I mean, you guys probably hear the panels talk about it all the time. Anytime you watch any sort of official event, especially at TI as of late, vision, vision, vision. You know, why do people pick Beastmaster? Why do people pick Enchantress? Like, what are the main benefits of this hero? It's vision. And Bounty Hunter does exactly that. And yes, it is very useful in pubs. Coming in at number four is Nyx Assassin. And yes, this hero is just still really good. Even though it's been nerfed quite a few times, its Ags recently got nerfed. I still think that the Ags build is like the best scaling 4 build in Dota. Honestly, the only other hero, honestly, <laughs> like kind of comes to mind is like a really good scaling 4 is Spirit Breaker, but I think that hero in general sucks. So, outside of Spirit Breaker, who kind of stinks in the early game, you have Nyx Assassin, who's a much more reliable laner. He doesn't have to try to trade to do damage, he actually has a long range stun at level 1 that does damage, unlike Charge, which is kind of worthless, it just is like a short stun with no damage. <laughs> Uh, Nyx Assassin is actually a good laner. It's also a great frontliner. It obviously sets up ganks. It's a vision hero. It's just one of those heroes that always is going to have value. It has a very simple laning stage. Once again, you're a melee hero that doesn't do that much, but you can pull, you can block camps, you can snipe couriers, you can drag waves, and you can throw out the occasional stun during the laning stage to get your offlaner to a good start. Coming in at number three, we have Monkey King. This hero was recently nerfed as a support but I still think it's really good. Honestly, the name of the game right now, especially at the highest level, is Vision. But you might be wondering, oh, but Speed, I, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not at the highest level. I'm just trying to win my pubs. Is Monkey King still good? Well, I'll say a couple things about that. I think Monkey King is best from the 3, 4, 5k, especially 5k and up ranges. Reason being, it's a very difficult mechanical hero. Understanding Jingu and when to build it is difficult. 
Casting Boundless is honestly not that easy, your E is a little bit confusing, and your ulti is unironically one of the hardest spells in the game to use. And the reason why I say that is like, I was recently watching a 3k MMR pub and the Monkey King would almost always ult too late. By that time, the enemy team was able to kite out easily, his ulti was completely wasted, and that was as a core. It's not as hard as a support because usually your teammates are getting gone on so you can follow it up, but all of these ideas, you combine them together with the fact that Monkey King kinda has to split push and, and set up pickoffs to be a good position for, makes him a difficult hero. So unless you're up for a challenge, and you're on the mid to upper tiers of MMR, I wouldn't recommend it, but I do think it's a very good 4 hero. Coming in at number 2, we have Snapfire. This hero didn't get nerfed, and I was really surprised. After TI and how consistently he was getting picked, I really expected Snapfire to get the, you know, the big nerfs in 7.30e, but that just didn't happen. The hero didn't get nerfed. And as a result, I still think this hero is insanely good. It's also one of the most flexible heroes in the game, in my opinion. It makes drafting very easy, and if you get really good at the hero, you can even optimize your skill build to the game. Are you laning with a slaughter and have a ton of physical kill potential? Well, you can max your E and absolutely shred the lane. Do you need to just play defensive and shove out the waves with something like a Sanking off lane? Okay, instead you can take your Q and your W and focus on shoving the lanes. That is what I really love about Snapfire. You can adapt to the game and most importantly, you're one of the best plus one heroes in Dota right now. I honestly think after Hoodwink's ulti got nerfed, Snapfire shifted up to the best single target ulti in the game. And I know it's not literally a single target ulti, but I'm talking about the type of spell where you're gonna chuck it up with a plus one. That's about it. It could be Storm Spirit, it could be Kunkka, it could be Void Spirit Q, it could be any spell. Mortimer's Kisses gives you the capability to kill people in the early game. And honestly, as simple as that sounds, it's just a very valuable tool to have. Also, in high MMR games, it's very important to be able to kill people from a safe range and quickly. And frankly, Snapfire is like the best here in the game at doing that. And actually, let me quickly explain why killing people from range and very quickly is very important. You guys watch TI, right? You notice that a lot of the games were very passive. Why is that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Of course, nerves come into play. The players obviously are very, you know, they're weary about making mistakes. No one wants to be the guy who feeds. No one wants to be the guy who leads his team up to a tier one and then has them all get wiped at the same time, right? No one wants to have that feeling. Of course, good captains will avoid that, but Snapfire, all in all, basically gives you the ability to walk up to a tier one or approach a tier one or approach a kill, right? Any sort of objective, whether or not that's a kill or a tower, it doesn't really matter in this case. What Snapfire does is basically gives you the ability to low commit on people, okay? Low committal kills are the name of the game in high MMR games right now. Uh, at least that's what I noticed. And just in general, the lower you can commit to a kill, the less resources and the least amount of positioning mistakes you can give up for a kill is optimal. And of course, Mortimer's Kisses enables that. So I just want you guys to kind of get that concept, being able to let your team just throw like a slight chain and take someone out of the fight with the slight chain plus Mortimer's Kisses costs you nothing in terms of positioning. And that's what's so valuable. But finally, last but not least, a hero that actually did get nerfed, but is still dirty at its, as a position four. Frankly, the nerfs weren't nearly hard enough is Weaver. I just think this hero is nasty all in all, like, Every single time I've played against it as of late, it's actually miserable to play against. And there's a couple reasons. It's a great laner, it's got good stats, Sakuchi is just a valuable spell for securing range creeps, blocking camps safely, dragging waves if needed, everything, it does everything, right? Bugs, Gemini attack, and the swarm are just insane value points. Gemini attack lets you one-shot couriers. It also lets you zone people in the landing stage. So it has a lot of just early game uses and you know, sniping couriers in general is actually one of the most undervalued things in the game in my opinion. And I actually think Weaver might be the best courier sniper in Dota because of how hard he is to catch and the fact that he one-shots couriers. And the swarm, we can't forget about the swarm. This ability is simply insane. You combine the swarm with a spirit vessel onto any target and they are basically guaranteed dead. I'm, I, like, honestly, they, they're either gonna have no armor or no HP, no regen, like, or both. <laughs> and usually it's both. And so what happens is like, you walk into some CM, you bug vessel her, it's like zero committal, right? It's not like, oh, you have to like commit an ulti or channel something. No, it's zero committal. You're gonna have like 1800 HP because you have a vessel and angst components. And then like, you basically solo kill the support, 
Hopefully, if you casted a good bugs, you've got armor reduction going on to four or five heroes. Uh, right, three is probably more reasonable, but optimally four or five heroes, and you're carrying the fight without even realizing it. Also, Sakuchi is just so much damage in the early game. Uh, it really does add up when you hit three, four targets with every single Sakuchi if possible. And the last thing I want to cover about Weaver before I end the video is I do want to mention that the Axe is honestly still good. They did nerf the range on it a little bit, so you might be thinking to yourself, oh, it's only five in a range now, it's bad. The thing is about this Weaver 4 is it buys so much HP that like, it's kind of okay to get that close. And 100 range nerf on the, on the ulti though was absolutely massive. It, it was, it hurt, it hurt Weaver for sure. But not to the point where it takes the hero out of the meta because honestly, even just the spirit vessel timing is good enough to make this hero viable. I really mean that. But the Ags timing is still really good. You don't even have to go Ags. It's totally fine if the enemy team has like a global, um, right? A lot of silences, you could go Glimmer, you could go Force, you could go Lotus. You could go any of the defensive items. You could go Solar Crest and play around, you know, armor reduction, help your team Roche even faster. That's the thing. Like, it's like, you know, Weaver, he just has options. I mean, even in terms of options, I even forgot to mention Roshan. Like, it's just, well, like, think about how many position fours enable Roche. It's really almost none of them. So when your Roche enable hero can come from the four roll, that's just another added benefit to this hero. The only thing it lacks is, of course, stuns. So in general, you want to pick it with mid laners like the Embers, the Voids, the Storms, the DKs, the Kunkas. It's really nice to have a setup here on your team because you're obviously not going to be doing it. And all right, that is going to be about all for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my list, my top five heroes for best position for us right now. Always remember, you still got to play well to make sure the heroes are actually going to make you gain MMR. But nonetheless, I'll see you guys in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.